Welcome to the show. I'm Nick Romico. Today I'm with inspection trainer Mike Nelson. Mike, thanks for being on the show. Good to see what you. are we doing here? We're going to take a look at this superior fireplace, Nick. What we have is a prefabricated insert, essentially a fireplace that's got a gas log assembly put into it. Now, was this a, originally a regular fireplace that you could burn real wood in? These units are set up for either. You can do it either way. You'll note that there's a gas line coming in through the side that can be used as a gas log lighter or a feed for your gas log assembly. In either case, one of the concerns we have right off the bat is when you see gas in this system, you want to make sure that the damper is clipped. The reason is if you get a gas buildup, and these systems obviously can come into the home, and then you have a, a fire hazard. Okay, so where's the damper and how do I find out if it's clipped as an inspector? What we have to do is get a look up the flue. Okay. And when you're a home inspector, one of the things you must do when you're looking at a fireplace is get your head into the assembly and look. When you have a gas log assembly like this, it makes it very difficult. So we've been provided with a mirror and a light. Okay. Okay, Nick, now that we have our light and our mirror here, you can see, looking up the flue, that the damper has actually been removed. It's not so even this there. unit should not be used as a solid wood burning appliance until that's repaired. As a gas log assembly, essentially it's fine. You can also see there's a little bit of a lip sticking out inside there. I would recommend having that tap back in so that we don't have the chance for superheated gases to escape the flue system and get into the chimney chest. And get outside the uh, flue. All right, so what's the next thing we should look at? All right, Nick, certainly uh, now that we've assumed that this could be used as an actual wood-burning system, we want to make sure that the primary heat protection, these refractory panels are in good shape. All they are is like a clay panel. And you can see that this one over here has just a very minor little crack in it. That's really nothing to be worried about. It doesn't look it, like there's any material missing. No, there's no material missing, and that's really what we're looking for. During the course of use of this system, it's going to wear, and you're going to have some thermal cracks, and that's really all that is. Once you start hitting it with logs, it may crack more seriously and then it be replaced, but that's a simple procedure. More, more concerning, however, is this gas line right back down in here that's feeding this whole system. There's no sealant around that gas line. We find this in many, many home inspections, and one of the things we need to worry about is that must be sealed. If this is a solid fuel appliance being used with the glass doors shut, this thing's going to starve for air. It's going to be right. reaching with its flame trying to get air and actually transversing heat down that gas line. When that happens, you could ignite the paper on the insulation inside the chimney chase, which then could cause a chimney chase fire. And we find that quite often when we pull the caps off the tops of these. So what about around the fireplace? Do we have to look at that? Certainly. We're concerned with what we call decorative surrounds. A lot of people love to put things around their fireplaces. You'll notice that there's a clear distance to any type of flammables on the sides and in front. In this case, we measured this. This is actually a little bit short. We want a minimum of 16 inches here, and if you'll put the tape measure out there, you'll see that it's just under 16 inches. Right. The reason is, is embers, when you have these doors cocked or, or closed, when you open this thing up, embers can drop out from the door and fall out here, and they'll sit there and smolder for days sometimes. It's very dangerous at night when you're asleep, you've had a fire, this ember sitting there, you could actually ignite the whole house. Same thing with a mantle. The mantle has to be a good distance above the fireplace, and when you look at these, sometimes you see scorching on the underside, meaning that the heat has actually damaged the material. And then last but not least, when you have a gas valve, such as this one here, you want to make sure that this is no more than four feet away and totally accessible. This cannot be mounted in a cabinet or put in any way that would give you trouble shutting it off in an emergency. So there's no way around this 16-inch hearth roll. Um, what about with the glass doors, the chains, or with a, uh, a fire-resistant hearth carpet? There's no way around that, right? No, you wrong. have to have a non-flammable surface, a safe distance out from anything that can actually cause embers to drop out. And that even includes pellet stoves and, and the like. You have to have protection because we know homes have burned down because of this. All right, Mike, let's go around the outside. Okay. Take a look. Okay, Nick, now that we've got to the outside, we're looking at the combustion makeup air vent here. Because in 1988, the California and, and actually across the nation, the energy group started saying we had to start putting doors on these fireplaces, we started starving them for air. So they mandated a, a makeup combustion air tube. You need to get underneath here and look up inside here, which obviously the camera's not going to be able to see, but as an inspector, you want to take a look at that, make sure it's connected so that the appliance is actually getting the air that it's required to have. And then again, here's our gas line coming in. We talked specifically about sealing the gas line up on the interior of the fireplace. All right, now we're on a totally different home and we have a big stone fireplace. 
Yeah, Nick, one thing we notice right off the bat about this fireplace is the fact that it's a larger opening. When you have a larger opening, of course, that means you have more of an opportunity for embers to fly out, so we have to extend the hearth extension out. And this one actually measured out, as you guessed earlier, at 22 inches, so that's an appropriate size hearth extension. A unique facet of this fireplace is you'll notice that we have the same type of refractory precast system, these little panels in here. Uh, it's not a usual application that I see in my region. We have the same issues as the one before, where we have minor cracks in the system here, and we do have a little bit of material missing. Not bad, but the owner's going to want to keep an eye on that, because once that starts getting worse, these panels are going to have to be replaced. And unlike the other prefabricated system, you can easily snap the panels out. This one's going to take a little bit more work. Of course, while we're here, we want to check the damper operation and make sure that it works. Always check it before you stick your head in there and look up. Uh, in a normal inspection, I would watch this. I would get my head all the way in here with a flashlight and I would do a, a full inspection of everything that I could see. Then I would go up on the roof and take a mirror or a large flashlight and see down as far as I could. And then if we saw significant problems, I might even take a chimney scan camera and run it down the flue and we would get a really good look at that. One of the concerns I have with these types of systems is gaps around the edge where the prefabricated panel meets the mortar and any around the lintel here. You want to make sure that there's no chance for superheated gases to go up into the system just in case this isn't all stone. This could very well be all stone, but without tearing it open I wouldn't know. If, it, However, there were wood in there and gases could get escape and get inside the chase, you could have some pretty significant damage. Mike, can you tell us a little bit about freestanding fireplaces and inserts? Sure, Nick. One of the things we see with a lovely fireplace like this, you know, it's so big, people want to use it to gain heat in the home rather than just the aesthetics. So they might take an insert and jam it in here. And inserts typically stick out quite a way, so that like would nullify. Like the stove types. Right, exactly. They, you might have a front that sticks out 8 or 10 inches out in front of the opening of the fireplace. Right. Which this, this hearth extension was designed for this opening here, not one out 8 or 10 inches. So when you open the front of that unit, you might get embers falling out and then you have a fire. So that's something we need to be concerned about with inserts. We see that very often. All right, what about freestanding units? Well, Nick, what we find very often is unlisted units in the marketplace that someone has built in their garage. And people not knowing any better will just grab them, try to put them in their home, and they're really unsafe. And a lot of these cheap cast iron ones I see around too. Right, exactly. Uh, you want to get a good look at the listing plate on those. Make sure they've been tested by a laboratory. Make sure that they're properly installed according to the guidelines. Now, your average inspector, he's not going to have a camera to drop down inside of a chimney, but that's far outside the scope of a standards of practice. Certainly. I encourage all inspectors, when they get on the roof, to look at as much of the chimney as they can see. That just is a good inspection. But certainly, a chim scam is way beyond the standards of practice. It's an expensive setup, typically about $3,000 for the and camera. And they're coming down a little bit more. They're coming down. Over time, we can get them cheaper. And it's really good for a lot of things. If you want to get inside a wall cavity, you can shove the camera up in there, too. So it's, it's beneficial to any inspection company to have a, a chim scan set up. And they're not really difficult to learn how to use. No, not really. They're very simple. And you it's can not charge like, extra for them as well. Oh, absolutely. You can charge a substantial extra amount once you get versed in what you're doing. All right, and Mike and I are going to do an upcoming show on how to use the camera as well. Looking forward to it, Nick. All right. Now, let's go to the next issue, a dirty chimney. Let's just say that uh, everything's fine with the chimney, but uh, it's filthy. Should a home inspector recommend that a chimney be cleaned? Certainly. Anytime you look at a system that's been used a lot and you start seeing creosote build up, creosote can catch fire, which will lead to a chimney fire, which would then damage the chimney system. And in metal systems, when you get a chimney fire, you can actually damage it enough to have to replace the entire system, uh, as well as flue liners out of terracotta. They'll crack. So certainly, if you see a decent buildup of creosote and it's a judgment call, you certainly would want to call to have it cleaned and further inspected. Well, Mike, thanks for being on the show. Nick, my pleasure. I appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.